Back in June, the federal liberal government published regulations to prohibit the manufacture, import, and sale of six categories of single-use plastics by the end of this year. Let's delve into the impacts of this policy with our two special guests. First, uh, Peter Sean Taylor returns. He's the senior features editor of C2C Journal. And Tony Alanis is also here. He's a first-time guest. He's the president of the Ontario Restaurant, Hotel, and Motel Association. Welcome to both of you. Glad to be here. Glad to be on your show. Uh, Peter, let's start with you. Uh, you have sure. written an uh, interesting article uh, that uh, the plastic ban will make uh, a uh, basically uh, a, a, a lot of things that we consider working basically not really working as well. So maybe if you can elaborate on that, uh, that could be the start of this episode. Uh, sure. It's uh, when, I, when I started to uh, look into this topic, especially going through the, the government's own reports and documents and assessments and uh, cost benefit analysis, um, what I discovered is that uh, for a, a very small benefit in um, supposed reduction in, in garbage or ocean, uh, ocean waste, uh, the results of, of banning these six uh, single-use plastic items is going to be uh, a whole raft of, of things. It's going to make almost everything else much worse. Uh, it's going to increase inflation. It's going to increase garbage, surprisingly enough. It's going to increase greenhouse gas emissions, which is uh, doubly surprising from coming from this federal uh, liberal government. Uh, it's going to send jobs overseas. Um, it's going to make it harder to drink your margarita. Uh, so this, the, 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 the scale of, of uh, negative uh, effects arising from this ban is, is really quite uh, surprising. And, and, and set aside, the, the, the benefits are really, really small. It's a, it's a strange um, policy that uh, seems to be based on a kind of almost a religious uh, belief that plastic is, is bad or evil in some way and we have to get rid of it. It's not really grounded in reality at all. Uh, and we're going to dive into various aspects of that as the show progresses, but I, I do want to give uh, Tony a chance as well. T tell me a little bit about the association and what your members are saying about this issue. Thank you, Tony. And uh, this uh, legislation coming up, uh, it, it, is, it is a, a, a rule that the industry would embrace only if we had more of a phasing approach, uh, more time to look at alternatives and uh, with government's help to look at ways and means of, for example, there's this non-conventional plastics that are out there made of byproduct, by plant products. Uh, and, and we hear from experts that municipalities don't have the infrastructure to efficiently recycle this product and, and, and put it into land use. That needs to be looked at more. The plastic items that we are using, all those six categories affect our industry and across Canada, all businesses that use them by about $2 billion in the next 10 years. In an industry that just came out of COVID and is hurting more now in recovery because of inflation, because of the workforce issues. It's not about not embracing environmental issues that all governments everywhere are talking about. It's about doing it the right way and, and, and having more time for industry to recover out of unprecedented critical pandemic that came upon us. Yeah, Tony, just sticking with you for a second, is it, uh, is it mostly the plastic straws and, and plastic cutlery? Is that, is that the big issue for your, for your group? All plastics are utilized in our industry and especially in the takeout and delivery approach that we have, which is really the, the category that has dramatically grown in our industry since COVID came on our pond. And, and there's more growth ahead. So we use those products, all six categories, very often, every day, and there's no alternative uh, product to replace it. So if we go in to replacing something that's been traditionally there and a stable in the way we operate, there has to be a replacement, a replacement that is safe and a replacement that is economically um, feasible to use. And we don't see those two 
uh, dilemmas answered yet. 